Hey everybody, and welcome to day five of fasting and prayer. I want to share with you some things that I got out of my time doing the, uh, my Bible reading today at the gathering place. We read our Bibles every day. We're in John chapter 12, and it's a story where Jesus goes to dinner with Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Uh, they're kind of celebrating, I think, and honoring him for who he is and what he's He's done by raising Lazarus from the dead. If you remember back in chapter 11, it says that he uh, was dead for four days and everybody was mourning and weeping and Jesus shows up and he heals them. So that's a powerful story in and of itself. But I want to actually read to you the verses and then see how it applies to us and what, what might speak to you about this time of your fasting and prayer. Chapter 12, verse 1 through 8 is where we're going. It says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, made Jesus a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? 300 denarii would have been the equivalent of about a year's worth of wages. So this is a hugely expensive gift, a whole year's salary. And contained in that that bottle that oil uh, and she pours it all out at his feet okay just think about that she took a year's worth of savings and she emptied it at his feet and Judas was upset about that this he said not because he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. But the poor you have with you always. But me, you don't always have. And, and uh, oh man, when I was reading this here, something really stood out to me. So here is this time where some people are gathered around and they're eating, right? Lazarus is there. He's eating and there's others at the table. They're eating. And what's Martha doing? Well, she's doing what Martha is known for. Martha is serving. And what's Mary doing? She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's worshiping. And then she brings this huge gift, uh, which would be considered an extravagant gift. And she just makes that sacrifice or offering to Jesus. Uh, and then, of course, Judas is there and he's just being all critical and, and complaining. He's missing the whole point because of his own internal greed and stuff that's just not satisfied and settled on the inside of his heart. And uh, I just, this is what really stood out to me the most. There's something about bringing an extravagant gift to Jesus while you're not eating or while you're fasting. Other people are working, other people are doing their thing, other people are eating and enjoying their feasting. But you, you've sat apart, set apart some time to sit at Jesus' feet and to worship and to acknowledge him. And coupling that with a heart uh, response that says, God, I want to give you my all and I want to give you my best. What do I have? For Mary, she had something that was so valuable. I mean, think about this. A year's worth of uh, value to that. That in a moment she was offering to the Lord. And she was giving it to him in a way that it would be of no other value to someone else. She wasn't giving it to someone else to see their their uh, joy or excitement because that's awesome to give to people that way where it blesses them. That gives us so much. But this was given directly to Jesus for his benefit. It was to bless him because she loved him, because he meant so much to her, because she wanted to bring something that represented her heart and her gratefulness. There's something about bringing a significant offering during your fast. It's something that catches God's attention, and it's something whose impact will outlast you and me. 
You see, in Matthew chapter 26, it records this story here. And Jesus said, hey, wherever this gospel is proclaimed, this story is going to be told as a memorial to her. So think about this. For 2,000 years now, her gift has been mentioned uh, throughout the world. It caught God's attention. It was significant to him. He didn't need it. It didn't add value to him. He didn't become more wealthy. It was her heart, her faith, her gratefulness that caused him to say, Oh, let's make sure that this giving keeps on giving. It keeps on making a difference. And I want to remember her for, for as long as this gospel is proclaimed. I want people to know what she did. I don't know about you. Uh, have you ever given something extravagant? Have you ever given something that was a huge sacrifice? You know, we typically say there's there's three types of giving. There's your tithe, which is we're, we're all, uh, as a follower of Christ, we all tithe. That is 10% of whatever comes through our hands for our income and our increase. So you get paid $1,000, you tithe $100. We do that all the time. Our motive for that is because this is part of our financial covenant with God. That this 10% belongs to the Lord. It's not even an offering or something like, oh God, look at, I'm giving this to you because, uh, I, because I love you. No, I trust you, God, and this belongs to you. The second type of giving is an offering. It's like a love offering. And it's over and above your tithe. And this is what you might direct to missions. Or you might give it to the single mom or the food bank or the poor. Or you might give it to a, uh, you know, a neighbor who you just feel like, man, I want to bless them. We give those types of offerings out of love for the purpose or the person that we're giving towards. And of course, we love God as well with that. And we're giving people. We're generous. But then the third type of gift. So first is tithe. Second is offering. But then that third is that extravagant offering. Some people say it's the type of gift that hurts. It's the one that costs you greatly. It's that extravagant gift. It's what Mary gave right here. And this is what's, uh, it's an unreasonable amount. It's the type of giving that if other people hear about it, like Judas, and they don't understand, they think you're crazy. They think it's ridiculous. They're the ones that say, what are they going to do with that kind of money? What are they going to do with that gift? Why are they going to use it? They question all of that stuff. And you know, I'm not giving giving it to be... Uh, you know, patted on the back by people around me. I'm not even giving it to help this missionary. I'm not giving it to help the poor. I'm giving this because I love Jesus. Now, it might go to those different things, but this is a gift that goes directly to the Lord. So when we're giving it, it's not, hey, I'm directing it so I get the benefit and joy from other people's faces and stories. No, this is because Jesus, I'm giving this to you because of who you are and what you've done. And uh, this is this is a gift that stretches. I don't know if you've ever given. I'd love to hear maybe what you have given before that has been a real stretch to you. We've given uh, several times that was a huge stretch for us. And I w wonder, man, I as I look back now, it doesn't seem that big. But at the time, it was huge. There have been a couple times when we've given our vehicles away. You know, you think about that. That costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time to pay for those vehicles, save for those vehicles. A couple of times that we've sown vehicles, we've given them away uh, because we felt prompted by the Lord. There's times when we, when we sold our house, and of course we bought it for a certain amount, and we sold it for a certain amount over that. And so all of that profit there, the increase, we tithed on. And that was a big number, but I, I don't even really consider that an extravagant gift though it was a big number for us it wasn't extravagant because it was just a tithe and so I'm being challenged even right now in this season to give extravagantly to the Lord there is something on the inside of me that says God I want to believe you I want to demonstrate my belief but I also want to demonstrate my gratefulness to you and I feel like there's some things I'm going after this year to give towards um Get, as far as an amount to, to give to the Lord, that would be an extravagant gift for me. Now, when we've sown in the past, you know, God has blessed us. He's provided for us. We've given cars away. I've never had a car given to me personally, 
but I have had the benefit of, uh, you know, in ministry using vehicles that were donated to the ministry. And so, hey, pastor, you could drive this or I'm driving it for, for work at times. And thank God for that. That was a blessing to me. Um, but it, I didn't give those things away, those, those significant gifts to me so that I would get something back. I gave it because, Lord, I love you. And I feel prompted. But man, I feel like there is something about Mary's gift that is challenging me to press in, to stretch. And I hope that you're challenged as well. Uh, what kind of extravagant gift would God have you give? What would you give to the Lord to really demonstrate your love, your gratefulness to him for who he is and what he's done for you? You don't have to tell me, but man, do it. See what God does in your life. I hope that encourages you. We'll be back with you again tomorrow.